A community is usually well aware of its firefighters and police officers, men and women who daily work at not only saving lives, but who also work at preventing conditions which put human life in danger. We, and I'm speaking for the community now, are not as aware as we should be that the work you do falls in the same category. You do as much to save life and prevent human disaster as anyone, and it's time that we get you out of that truck that passes us by on a snow-filled street so that we can talk to you about what you do for us. In the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to take step one and in overview fashion, describe your job and the principles that guide what you do. It's intended to be an overview. After viewing this program, you should have a basic awareness of the snow fighter's job, but it's not intended just to be an overview. Every job has a mission, and that mission is what makes plowing guidelines, for example, more than a technique, more than words on a page. The why of something gives common sense and spirit to the practical functions of a job. So I think it's appropriate to begin by describing the mission of your job. Your mission is to provide a safe road surface for the motorist, for people, within the limits of economic and environmental conditions. Picture an operating team in a hospital working silently and intensely together to save a life. Sometimes at the crack of dawn, sometimes while the rest of the world sleeps. Your operating team is interspersed throughout a geographical area, and you use the tools of your trade like a road surgeon, slicing the blade of a plow through the snow, listening to the distinct personality of each storm, constantly adjusting and communicating your awareness of what's happening out there on the road, not only through your hands, but to the other members of your team. What's more common to all of us than the roads we travel on? What's more vital? In this overview of your job, we're going to look at three essential areas. First, we're going to look at the responsibilities and guidelines in the snow fighter's job. Second, we'll talk about the communication that needs to occur before, during, and after a storm. And third, we'll describe some of the standard tools of your job your operating materials and equipment. Your plowing responsibilities fall into three areas. Making a road passable, widening a road so there is full use of the road, cleaning up the roadways for further safety and preparation for future storms. So we're talking about immediate attention given to making sure that an emergency vehicle can travel on that road. Then as soon as possible, returning that road to its original condition and then clearing away and storing the snow to ensure safety and provide additional storage for the next snowfall. These are general principles, but there are additional variables that affect how you carry out these three responsibilities. How do operators carry out these responsibilities in an urban area in comparison to a rural area? Are there any other differences I should be aware of? What priorities shape how I carry out these three responsibilities? What do you mean by passable, widening, and cleanup? Those terms could mean different things to different supervisors and operators. Plowing responsibilities do differ somewhat in urban areas as compared to rural areas. That's not surprising. For example, it's important in both areas to have a passable road. However, when a storm is very severe in a rural area, you may not be able to make a road passable without risking your own safety because of visibility. A snowstorm blows differently over rural roads. The conditions are different. That's why areas with potential for low visibility should be identified before the winter season and precautionary measures such as daylighting of sharp cuts and installation of snow fences should be made. In a rural area, advanced preparation and sometimes minor construction work is needed to eliminate potential snow traps. 
And then there's the urban area, which has more people, more cars, more buildings, houses in closer proximity to each other, and reduced storage. It would be nice to have one urban policy, but that's not realistic. Each city and town shapes how it wants its street cloud. Being sensitive to their perceived road needs is part of your job. However, these are some examples of guidelines that urban areas follow. Waiting to plow until two inches of snow has fallen. Giving priority to arterial streets over residential streets. Establishing snow emergency routes. Recognizing the limited snow storage space in a commercial area and consequently windrowing the accumulated snow and then loading it and hauling it away. Setting up parking restrictions for the winter season and during the plowing after a storm. Good operators are in touch, unison with their cars and trucks. They listen for how the engine is working and anything different is a signal to them. That's basically what you're doing. when You adjust your plowing responsibilities to a specific geographical area. You get to know its personality and rhythm. Then you get in sync with it. OK, now to the second question. What priorities shape how you carry out your three plowing responsibilities? The priorities flow from your mission, maintaining that lifeline for people on the road. They are, first and foremost, you plow to allow for emergency use for people in emergency vehicles to reach hospitals and for fire and police departments to use the roads to get to an emergency. Your second priority relates to the volume of traffic. The blocking of heavily traveled high-speed roads can cost the public millions of dollars in a short period of time. A third priority has to do with when you plow. Plowing in general needs to precede commuter traffic or hazardous conditions may occur for the driver and motorist. School bus routes define another priority. You need to be aware of the routes and their priorities so that the school schedules can be maintained. Finally, priority needs to be given to the maintenance of farm-to-market roads so that commerce can be carried out as efficiently as possible. Now let's look at the terms. Passable, widening, cleanup. What is meant by each, considering the differences of urban and rural conditions, and the different desires of a particular community. To help define these terms further, one standard maintenance manual has specified four different levels of service. With each level, a different standard of plowing service is required. A level four service means one wheel path in each lane will have intermittent bare pavement with sanded hills and curves. At level three, both lanes have intermittent bare wheel paths with sanded hills and curves. Level two, the right lane on divided roadways and both lanes on two-lane roadways have bare wheel paths with intermittent bare pavement before coverage time is reduced. The left lane on divided roadways has intermittent bare wheel paths with sanded hills and curves. At the highest level of service, or level one, all lanes have substantially bare pavement. Your responsibility is to become acquainted with your route before the winter season and to know which level of service is required on each road. Becoming acquainted with your route means getting to know its plowing hazards. Hazards include locations where a route goes from a hard surface to a granular one or where there is any other significant change in surface. It includes manhole locations, expansion joints or bridges or other structures, and shoulder hazards, such as guardrails, light poles, signs, and in rural areas, mailboxes. As I visualize your job, one person in a truck for long stretches of time, having to be constantly alert and intense on the road on its changing conditions, peering out your window and needing to drive in all kinds of visibility situations, constantly keeping your eye out on the one hand for plowing hazards, and on the other hand for motorists, some of whom do not drive carefully in a snowstorm, and others who through no fault of their own are sliding all over the road, well, I get a couple of feelings. It's certainly not an easy job, and if I were in your shoes, I could feel very much alone sometimes. And that brings us to the second basic area in this overview, the area of communications. We've already referred to it in many ways as we discussed your plowing responsibilities. 
Communication really begins with the mission. Unless you keep your life-saving mission foremost in your mind, that solitary trek of yours in a snowstorm will seem even lonelier. More than that, the department at large and your supervisors need to communicate their appreciation for that mission you have. This kind of communication needs to happen before a storm hits. This kind of communication conveys to a person that sense of value in what he or she is doing. And we all need that. And before storms begin, you need to see and have a sense of teamwork among your colleagues and supervisors. Those people that I described gathered around an operating table at the beginning of this program have one advantage over you. They can see each other. Their proximity to each other is very close. Because your operating tables are roads and your team is so widely interspersed, it is easier to forget how much you need to communicate with each other in the midst of a storm. Put yourself out on the road in one of those storms, a good one. The storm changing rapidly, visibility is terrible, two-way communication with your supervisor is essential. Your supervisors need to know what's happening, to be aware of any malfunctions in equipment, and in turn, they need to clearly inform you of your responsibilities as the conditions of the storm change. It is also important for you to know the forecast and the future operational plans as a storm develops. One of the most valuable tools for communication is the two-way radio. It is not only important that trucks be equipped with radios, but that the radios be used both ways. A physician, a firefighter, a police officer, a snow fighter. People who are working to preserve life must keep their team members informed. You can't let the solitary nature of your drive blind you to the risk to human life, including your own, if you fail to communicate with each other. After the storm, a team needs to talk about what they could do better next time what they learn to help them in another storm. They need to let each other know that they've done a good job. The last area in this overview concerns your materials and equipment. First, let's look at the equipment. And these can be separated into the categories of trucks, motor graders, plows, and sanders. The truck you most commonly use is a standard single axle dump truck, which is especially good for snow removal in the winter. Sometimes, but to a much lesser degree, you use a tandem axle truck, which has the capacity to hold twice as much sand and salt. In the urban area, motor graders are usually used for snow and ice removal. Their slower speeds make it difficult to use on high-speed, high-volume roads. To do the cleanup operation after the initial plowing, we use the front-end loader. The front-end loader is also used for loading trucks and sanding operations. As for plows, you have the V-plow, which is used for heavy snows or breaking through drifts. It can also be used for light plowing. The two-way reversible plow, which can throw snow to the right or left. A one-way plow, right or left, which is the most common type of plow. The rotary plow, which is used when the snow is extremely heavy or deep. It's easy to talk about sanders because there are generally just two types of sanders used in Minnesota. The first is the tailgate sander, and the most commonly used tailgate sander is attached to the rear of the truck box. You manually determine the distance the sand is spread. The second type of tailgate sander is called a ground-oriented sander. This sander automatically ties the amount of spread to the speed of the truck by means of an electronic device. The advantage of this type of sander is that there is a constant rate of application without your needing to worry about the speed of your truck. The materials you use to control snow and ice fall into two categories, abrasives and chemicals. In Minnesota, sand is the most commonly used abrasive, and the primary chemicals used at this time are sodium chloride, common salt, and calcium chloride. Contrary to popular misconception, the total amount of chemical usage is minimal. In a winter season, only about 100,000 tons is used. I'd say you accomplish a lot with that amount. Maybe that's why everyone thinks it's so much more. So, we've talked about your plowing responsibilities, the significance of communication, and your equipment and materials. Most of all, we've tied all three of these areas to a life-saving mission that needs to be spoken, 
remembered and appreciated. But when all is said and done, I personally like the way you talk about your jobs. Oh, you may say it very quietly, simply, with a few words, but your faces say all the rest. And so I leave this overview with some of the people who serve with you. And I kind of enjoy uh, plowing snow. I know I talked to some of the older fellows around, and they're to the point where they don't care to plow the snow anymore. You know, they just do not see winter coming. I kind of get a kick out of it yet. Uh, some of the satisfactions maybe is uh, kind of like we have a fairly big shop here, and maybe one of the satisfactions is, uh, hey, I never went in the ditch this year. You know, you make side bets with your buddies and stuff like that. Who's going to go in the ditch first and stuff like that. And, uh, I think it's a great time. You know, you go out, you get up early in the morning, and uh, you got to go kick a bunch of snow off the road. And uh, once you're done with it, hey, you know you've done something today anyway. Uh, it isn't a type of deal where you go out and, and you say, oh, I never did anything. I just sat around all day. You sat in your truck most of the day, but it was a, it was, it's a long, it gets to be a long, hard day. Uh, mile after mile, same old road, you know. It's a little bit different if you're operating a tandem with a wing. You know, you get to go see some little different country anyway throughout the day. You could wing other people's roads off. Uh, I kind of enjoy it. I, as far as the satisfaction, you know, uh, it's a, I like it. It's a good job. I wouldn't. Right at the moment, I don't plan to trade it. Uh, in a couple of years, they're going to make me some kind of a, a big person around here. I know that, but it's no big deal. You know, you just come up with little stories, and you go back and forth. And I think the main thing is get along with everybody at work. Speaking of... Uh rewards and gratification and it's getting the job done uh, getting the road cleaned off and getting it sanded where it needs to be and uh, being able to do all this and and without hitting anybody or, or running in the ditch yourself it, sometimes it's a it's a job just keeping these babies on the road uh, let alone plow snow with them some people get the idea because we we got a plow in front of it that that we can go any place and we can see better, but really uh, with that plow kicking snow and a lot of times the dust, snow dust up on the windshield, a lot of times the cars can see, people in cars can see better than we can. Well, the snow plant's nice, you know, it's a job that you can see that you've accomplished something. And then, you know, once the sun comes out a little bit, then it's, you know, your snow gets soft and slushy and you can clean it off right down to bare pavement. It's like, it looks like you've done something. I think it's the satisfaction is that when you look in your mirror and you you're trying to figure out where the roadway actually lies and you're plowing and you look in your mirror and you see what you've accomplished just by opening it. And I guess as the day wears on, you start seeing more and more people getting around. You see your ambulances and stuff being able to move to get to problem spots. And I think it's just a satisfaction knowing that you accomplished something when you know it's nationwide, they're telling about the big blizzard in Minnesota. Within 24 hours, Minnesota's like any other state. We're moving, we've opened them up. Thank you.